TikTok's growth shows no signs of slowing down. The social media platform's user base is now estimated to be in the billions. TikTok is working hard on improving the targeting of ads, and as a consequence, TikTok's turnover in Europe surged almost sixfold in 2021. But the success of TikTok is not only influencing its own growth trajectory. No, TikTok is affecting the broad economy as well, arguably reshaping the entire social media landscape and how humans connect with each other. But on top of that, the Chinese-owned short video app is influencing industries and sectors beyond the social media space. And this influence is sometimes referred to as the TikTokification of everything. And in this video, I will outline why the changes TikTok brought to internet services all around the world are here to stay, even if the app might eventually be banned in the United States. So without further ado, Let's get started. All right, my impression is that the Chinese owned video app TikTok has helped accelerate two major phenomena. The first might be described as the TikTokification of social media, and the second one might be referred to as the TikTokification of the internet. And before I get into the details of these two phenomena, Let's just very quickly highlight the phenomenal rise that the TikTok app has experienced over the last four years. So the short video app was first launched in 2018 after the parent company ByteDance acquired the app musically and merged it into TikTok. And as of today, according to Statista data, TikTok has more than 1 billion monthly active users, making it the fourth biggest social media platform following Facebook slash Instagram YouTube and WhatsApp, which each have at least 2 billion active users. And if you look at another metric, namely the time spent on each platform, as of 2022, TikTok may very well already be considered more successful than the aforementioned competing platforms, as users use TikTok on average for almost 46 minutes a day compared to 30 minutes they spend on Instagram, for example. But TikTok's rise also comes at a cost. You'd expect a company that was generating revenues of 61 billion US dollars in 2021 to be profitable, right? Well, according to a recent Wall Street Journal report, TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, posted operating losses of more than 7 billion US dollars in 2021, more than tripling the losses of 2022. And the report states, ByteDance revenue continues to expand up nearly 80% to 61.7 billion US dollars in 2021. But so too are the company's expenses as it focuses on growth. The Chinese company's cost of sales came in at 27.4 billion US dollars for 2021, up 79% from the previous year. Among the factors offsetting its rapid revenue growth, 14.6 billion in research and development spending and 19.2 billion in selling and marketing expenses. With these numbers out of the way, let's focus on the influence TikTok has on the broader economy. Earlier I said that TikTok is accelerating two major phenomena. The first one being the TikTokification of social media. So what do I mean by that? Well, I think it's two things. First, the emergence of short and ultra short form videos that are often accompanied by an audio track, either a song or some other kind of audio recording. And of course, other social media platforms have been hurt by the success of TikTok. If users spend more time on TikTok's platform, that means they will likely spend less time on the other social media's platforms. And so it comes as no surprise that other large social, social media apps are trying to copy the features that, that TikTok is implementing. And they are trying to decipher the TikTok success formula. So features that you can now find among a wide range of social media platforms include not only the format of short form videos, but also user interface features such as vertical full screen videos, continuous vertical scrolling, and very few UI elements that might disturb the user experience. For instance, both Instagram and Facebook now offer so-called Reels. YouTube launched YouTube Shorts in August 2021 in their attempt to lure TikTok influencers over to YouTube Shorts. Snapchat launched Spotlight and even Reddit created its own version of yeah, TikTok's video feed, mimicking TikTok's vertical scrolling. And just recently, Twitter too announced that they will be adding a new 
TikTok-like full-screen video feature to their platform. And these platforms are literally spending a fortune trying to incentivize users to use their short-form short video tools. At launch, Snapchat, for example, distributed 1 million US dollars per day in Spotlight Rewards. YouTube at first established a $100 million creator fund for YouTube Shorts and is now planning to give Shorts creators a 45% cut of their ad revenue. And similarly, Instagram offered creators up to $35,000 to post videos to its TikTok clone Reels. And there is another way in which TikTok changes the way social media works. Basically, users are now primarily using platforms like TikTok Instagram or Facebook for entertainment purposes, to watch videos and less so to communicate and interact with their friends. Or at least the way they interact with their social circle has changed, as now most of the interaction takes place in private messages. Let me just show you what Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg said in a very recent interview with The Verge. I think the way that social services have evolved is that most of your real interactions at this point are in messaging. So the way that feed is primarily creating value at this point is showing people content that then you go find and send to your friends in messaging and have real interactions in messaging. So from that perspective, it used to matter more who posted the content that you saw in feed because if you're commenting on it in line, you're interacting with the person who posted it. Increasingly, what we are seeing in the flywheel around Discovery Engine is whether it's content from a creator or content from a friend, you see something interesting, you send it to a group of friends or a friend, and then you're interacting there. That actually does facilitate real interactions between people. Now, the second phenomenon that I wanted to talk about is the TikTokification of the internet, meaning that TikTok is not only influencing social media companies, but also companies outside the realm of social media. What you might not expect, for example, is that TikTok is not only threatening Google's video platform, YouTube, but also its core Google services, including Google Search and Google Maps. For example, a senior vice president at Google is quoted saying, in our studies, something like almost 40% of young people, when they are looking for a place for lunch, they don't go to Google Maps or Search, they go to TikTok or Instagram. And again, when it comes to the TikTokification of the internet, I want to highlight two things, two developments. First, there are also companies operating in different, different sectors that are now making changes to their platforms, user interfaces and layouts, trying to make them yeah, less clunky and distilling them down to yeah, a few overly simplified features provide a few examples here. The NBA app, for instance, added a vertical video feed of sports content to its app. A so-called Spotify canvas is a three to eight second Spotify video loop that is shown on the mobile Spotify app while you play a song. Supergrade is an app where people can review and share their favorite beauty products. And I'm sure you can come up with many other examples of this TikTokification of everything feel free to share your ideas in the comments down below. Now, the second way in which TikTok is changing the broader economy is the emerging relevance of AI, so artificial intelligence, to recommend the best content, the best products, be it the best real estate property or the latest fashion trends, to recommend the best job or the best suited dating partner. Obviously, the idea that data is the new oil is not new, and, uh, and AI itself is also not new but AI is becoming more and more relevant. In recent years, artificial intelligence recommendations have become more and more visible to the user itself. On TikTok, it is literally called for you. And for certain companies, their data has become a major competitive advantage, which is important to understand for investors. Let me once again quote what Meta CEO Zuckerberg recently said with regard to the possibilities that artificial intelligence now has now has to offer as AI capabilities have improved dramatically over the past few years. He said, the basic thing is when we got started with newsfeed, we were years away from having the technology to be able to do the content understanding on each post in the system, understand what they are about, understand what you care about, and then be able to recommend you in real time, basically with very low latency content that you might be interested in. 
from across tens of millions or hundreds of millions of posts that are out there. If you think about it, it's actually a lot easier of a problem to basically take the several hundred things that your friends and the accounts that you follow have posted today and just rank them in the order that you might want to see them. And we're not necessarily recommending your content. You've chosen to follow those people. We're just making sure that, okay, if your cousin has a baby, you're not going to miss that. Whereas if someone just posts a ton of stuff and you always ignore it, posts again, that maybe that's a little further down or something. And I think you're right that TikTok really showed that a bunch of these things were possible. The AI technology to now not just be able to rank the content that you're following from friends, but also really be able to actually do a very good job of basically recommending content from the whole corpus of content that's out there and making that be good. That's something that I think has only really started being possible in the last few years. Zuckerberg is obviously primarily talking about social media here. But my point is that such AI driven discovery engines are now not only used on social network networks. Look at recruiting, for example, LinkedIn and most of the world's biggest job search sites. They use AI to match people with job openings. For instance, their tools help recruiters as well to find suitable talent and employees that are optimized for the likelihood of making a successful hire. Similarly, you can encounter personalized discovery engines in the e-commerce space. Etsy, whose mission statement is keep commerce human, ironically uses AI for the search engine to deliver the most relevant and personalized search results to its users. In one of their recent earnings calls, Etsy CEO Josh Silverman said, we are continuing to innovate our XWalk real-time retrieval engine to not only use billions more data points, but to simultaneously steer our search engine to optimize for specific attributes, such as to help a buyer to find a high quality wallet that is brown and full grain leather and available in time for an upcoming anniversary. And obviously other e-commerce businesses like Amazon, Wish or Shein are also using AI to learn more, more about their customers' preferences. To provide one final example here, of course your movie and series recommendations on Netflix as well as recommended playlists on Spotify. They are also highly, highly personalized. Spotify, for instance, uses AI to collect and store and evaluate various kinds of user data such as the songs they listen to, keywords searched, their location, the device they use, or songs they frequently listen to. So again, data is becoming the most valuable resource for many businesses and businesses know that. And investors should very closely yeah, observe this development as well. Rex Woodbury concludes on his blog, Digital Native, in an article that actually inspired this video. The major consumer applications of AI will lean heavily into sophisticated recommendations that anticipate your wants and desires before you even know them. In the same way that the TikTok for you page has shown people that they are gay before they themselves have even arrived at that realization. Today's AI applications are still rudimentary to those we'll see in the coming years. Now, as an investor, it's important to continuously learn new things. So if you want to learn more about investing and what Warren Buffett learned from another investing genius, I recommend you watch the following video next. Take care.